<laughs> Hi again. I am really sorry, and I apologize for not getting back to you sooner with another session on my hand lettering, but life's little piddly diddly things sometimes get in the way. Everything is fine, and I'm excited about continuing with the lessons. Um, so, oh, I want to tell you what a wonderful response I got to my first uh, video. Uh, everybody was so kind and so good, and they sent me messages, and uh, it, it was uh, almost a little overwhelming, but I appreciate it all. I truly do. I'm just trying to help you get a grip on hand lettering, and you have to start. If you're going to do it right, you have to start with the single stroke uh, alphabet. Now, you just do. Okay. Um, Everybody had beautiful responses, but uh, in a way I wasn't surprised. All, all of a sudden, uh, they're wanting to talk about convex lettering, Old English lettering, uh, get a picture of these, Johnny, and also, of course, cursive. And these are all fine and well, and we will touch base with them. We will. But you cannot do this type of lettering until you master the single stroke alphabet. Now there's just no way. Now it's not all grim because I do intend to start another series just strictly on the uh, script lettering, lowercase in particular. I've got a real novel way, an interesting way to teach you the shape and how to do cursive lettering. So I'm excited about that and I'll start that right away as well. You can handle both that and the single stroke at the same time, but you cannot jump to these alphabets until you've got this one down. So let's see, where did we leave off? I'm in quite a mess here. Uh, our brush. Now I use a three-part wash station. This is very dirty paint thinner or mineral spirits, whichever you happen to pick up. I don't care. I can't really tell the difference. Um, this is really dirty uh, it, and it gets very bad toward the end of the day and sometimes you may have to change it, but this this is dirty. Uh, this is medium dirty. It's your second wash and this is nice clean thinner. Now sometimes I will even use a little bit of lacquer thinner, but that's only occasionally. But I have it on hand just for the heck of it. So we wash first in our first station the dirty, dirty stuff because I had oil, a lot of oil in this brush, and I want it in here. Then I take it to the next station and wash it out there. Now that should be clean enough because it wasn't a dirty brush. It only had oil in it. If it had been a dirty brush, I would have gone ahead and washed it one more time in the clean thinner, and then you would have been sure to have a nice clean brush. Okay, so we're in a mess here, I see. Gosh, I sometimes think that, think that the um, best player in a sign shop is probably the sweeper. My mother was a sweeper in our sign shop, and she was a good one. She kept things nice and tidy. But, um, okay, so where did we leave off? Here's our black paint. I really prefer for you to practice with only black paint. Uh, if you switch to colors and all, it doesn't uh, show up. It doesn't show your mistakes as well. It doesn't, uh, it just, black is best for practicing. Now, it just is. So please use black. Uh, and you can use one shot, or oftentimes I, um, I substitute it for um, Rust-Oleum, just at the hardware store. That works well too, no, no problem with that. Okay, we've got a clean brush. This right here, this is handy to have. This is just a foam core poster board, and I've got it measured four inches, and that takes care of your lines real easy. That way you don't have to uh, mess with a yardstick and measurements a lot. You can also, you can also drop down to a three inch one. 
uh, you can drop down there if you'd like um, and play with it. I want to impress on you to play with this. Uh, if this was a horrible chore, um, I wouldn't be doing it. If I didn't get pleasure out of it, uh, I'm not one for searching for things that I don't enjoy. So have fun with it. And if you, uh, of course, I'm teaching with a four inch letter, but if you want to drop down to a three inch, we'll play with it. I don't mind at all. It just shows that you're very interested in figuring out what's best for you. Uh, drop down a brush size if you're going to drop down to the three inches. Okay, so we get our brush in paint. We have our palette. We work it real good. It's way too thick. Now, it's just a personal preference. I work right out of the can. It's a habit and a personal preference. I used to work in the field where the wind blew and, and all that stuff, and little paper cups just never did work for that. And it's it's hard to transfer over. I certainly can, but out of laziness or uh, because of habit, I work right out of the can. I take my dirty thinner clear out of the way. Uh, I sometimes work with my medium because it's not really that dirty and I'm working with black. So that's the thinner we're going to use. We'll put it right there. Okay, now we've got to get our brush to a very, very nice chiseled edge. Wiggle it around, get it to an edge. It's not quite thin enough. Now if by some chance you get too much paint on your brush and it works down into the, uh, not into, but over the ferrule, uh, what you do is you just, it, it hasn't done that in this instance, but let's say it did, and we just pinch that little edge there to get that little spot of paint out, and then we're okay again. You don't want the paint to go down further than the ferrule. That's not good. That guarantees drips and all that come with it. I'm gonna have to go over here all right, so we left off in the first lesson with a simple leg or a single stroke going down. Now, you see, I don't really have my paint quite right. Uh, I don't. I'll have to touch that up. And uh, But it's no problem to touch up. It's not. And then we just go down again. And you've got to remember that you need to twist or roll that brush on the top. I seem to be shaky today and I don't know why. That's fine, I'll overcome it. Um, we studied the leg. Uh, we call it a stroke or a leg. For instance, if that was an R, that would be referred to as a leg. Okay, you should have been practicing that and I hope you have been. Uh, the next thing we s touched base on was rolling and twisting your brush. Oh, another thing. Now, when you face your easel, have good posture. Good posture is important. Stand up tall and straight and approach your work as if you are going to have a good time. Um, you cannot letter pretty, if you're all bent over askew or in a gangly position, you just can't do it. So good posture um, is always a must. So we got our leg. We practiced that all through the week. We also learned that we have to learn how to come down into a point, a point, by twisting that brush. You twist it to the left, you twist it to the right, you twist it to the side. You rarely, unless you're left-handed, and, and I apologize to left-handed sign painters, my dad was a left-handed sign painter, and he did have some obstacles to overcome. Uh, and uh, see, a stroke like this is difficult for me. It can be done, but a left-handed person, that would come a lot easier. 
where this would be more difficult. Um, it's uh, Left-handed people have always had to overcome obstacles, and so I'll let you guys work that out yourselves. Uh, there's really no better way to learn how to twist your brush than by making a simple five-pointed star. Now, I just did something right there that if you'll review the film clip, you'll see what I did. I'll tell you when I do it again, but I think it's something that just comes to you. Now, I'm really twisting that brush. Okay, got it. And then I come down here. Now, I'm going to do exactly what I told you. I'm going to flip that brush over to come down here because I actually have plenty of paint. Well, no, I said I did, but I I didn't. Um, occasionally, well, more than occasionally, quite a bit, uh, you'll flip your brush. But we won't get into that. That's not necessary right now because I kind of believe that might be something that you just learn yourself. And yet I'm not sure. Okay, the best way to learn to twist that brush is a five-pointed star. There you go. Make lots and lots of stars. They're happy little things. Lots of stars. Lots and lots of stars. So now today, we, we I'm just reviewing this, what we talked about in the very first segment. Your single stroke leg, you've got to learn how to roll and twist your brush. Five point stars are the best way to do that. Today, we're going to cover the uh, horizontal stroke. All right, we'll make it about that long. You make a, a horizontal stroke. You come down twisting your brush. Come down twisting your brush. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. And we have a horizontal stroke. Now make one right here. Try to make them pretty. But you're never going to get perfection. If you're looking for perfection, you're looking in the wrong place. Um, it's an illusion of perfection. You're trying to make it look perfect. And it will be close. And then come in your middle here and catch that stroke. Set your width to what you want. Cut it right there to a nice point and a nice point. So your lesson this week is going to be the horizontal stroke. Now, in learning that, I can turn you loose on the letter E. Set your width. Come down. There you go. Palette your brush. Make sure that you've got plenty of paint. Make sure that that's a nice chiseled edge. We're going to make our E. Now, you usually make the horizontal stroke of an E about half as, as long as it is tall. You try to do that. I don't know if there's a regular rule. Half of this stuff I'm teaching you, I'm just going by memory and what I've done for so many years. Um, and like I say again, I am not the best sign painter in the world. I don't even come close. But I'm more than willing to help you with what I do know. All right, so now we've got that on our E. Looking pretty good. It's a lucky day. All right, on your center horizontal bar, you don't want to go all the way out here. You're going to go just a little bit short. Right in the middle, find your middle, set your width, and come right on over. But not quite to as long as the top and the bottom. Now this is kind of close, but it's still a little bit shorter. 
it could have been a tiny bit shorter yet, but you just don't really want it to, and, and I don't know exactly why that is, uh, maybe attractiveness or, I, I don't know. I'm not feeling like I know very much today at all. All right, you have your E. I can let you practice on that after you've done quite a few of these. You need your horizontal bar in order to make your E. I can turn you loose on an F. Whoops. All right. And we come over. Now you're going to watch, watch carefully and try to make this horizontal bar about the same width as you do, uh, width and length and all of that as you did your E. That's about it right there. Everything is done by your eye and your head. This is all in your head. It's mental. You have to make your head wills your hand and your brush to do what it's doing. If you can't think it. Now, I drop my F down a little from the center. Okay, we got it. There we go. We got what we want. And a little bit shorter, as in the E. Whoops. Well, that's kind of pretty. You don't really mind uh, the snap. Snap's good. All right, and it just shows you're working your brush real well. I can turn you loose on an H because that's just your leg that we practiced on the first segment. We're trying to get these letters the same width as each other. Close is good. Nothing is perfect. There we go. And you see, you just play with this brush until it does what you're wanting it to do. Take your time and make a bona fide effort to make a pretty letter. Now, most sign painters wouldn't, now this is dead center. Your H. Now you already should have a grasp on your eye. Pretty good grasp on this. There's something happening with my brush down there, but that's okay. Now, as we go along, you're going to want to try for proper spacing, but that's a whole other segment. Spacing is something that comes to you. It's very, very important. You can't sell it short. But I can't overload you with a lot of stuff. Try to space them as pretty as you possibly can. You always, if you have an I in between letters, especially if it's a straight leg on either side, you try to leave a little bit more space than the other letters to give it more breathing room. We'll set this over here. Okay, we've got, we're all the way to our I now. But now, kids, if I tried to teach you, if I tried to jump to letters like your convex or your old English, um, I would do, be doing a really disservice to other sign men. Uh, I, it would be very disrespectful. You have to learn this. this. This is the first part of hand lettering. And I can't let you jump too fast, so we're just going to take our time. Now, you see, I had my paint a little bit too thin there, and it bled through the paper. Don't worry about that stuff. Just don't even worry about it. It is such a tiny thing, and if that would happen on a legitimate sign that you have primed and prepped and your background is nice and shiny and smooth, you would be able to take and just wipe that uh, and fix that. 
It's not a problem. Don't let stuff like that deter you from your practice because it's not that important. E F H I O. We can do an L. Whoops, where's my paint? I lost my paint. All right, an L. And again, we leave a little bit more space to let that eye breathe. Not a lot. Sometimes it's not even negligible, but it's there. That space needs to be there. And my mark is a little bit too long there. That's another thing. When you mark out your letters or your lines with charcoal, like I've given a slight impression here with, it doesn't always mean that you're going to follow that mark. That mark tells you as much where not to go as it does tell you where to go. But you'll learn that too. And then I can also turn you loose on the T. Now, on the T, the crossbar is all, now the T, I'm going to come over here to the edge, and this is just uh, spacing. Uh, your T, you always make the top bar first. You make that top bar first. Well, I'm sure having trouble today. You're going to find out also that some days are real good lettering days, and other days are just not. When you're a professional and when you've got a lot of experience, you tough your way through it. When you're a beginner, don't beat yourself up about it. Rest. Uh, take your time. But don't be frightened of it. It's, it's really fun. And look here what you can do. It's really quite amazing. I never tire of watching it. I sat for hours upon hours and watched my daddy letter. All right, so now we have got your E-F-H-I-L-T and I can turn you loose on these letters because they all have crossbars. I can also probably, because we're it seems like we have time, it doesn't seem like I've spent a lot of time here these videos have to be, you know, a, a certain length to be interesting. And I'm unaware of the time, but that's okay. I can turn you loose on these letters. This week we're going to practice the crossbar, the horizontal line, and we're going to practice the slanted line. At just about that slant right there just about like that whoops I don't want to get my finger in the wet paint all right and then once you have that and this is about the slant that you want it no more, no less. It takes a lot of concentration. You have to be thinking you're willing that brush to do what you want it to do, and it won't do it alone. You have to use your head. And we, so I'm turning you loose on the crossbar, a slanted line this way, And let's go, hmm, do I have enough room? Yes, I do. We're going to go with a slanted line this way. Just about that slant. All right. There we go. And you just play with it. Like you've got good sense. Always try to use good sense. And we'll make another. All right. Now this is something that I don't advise. 
because I have wet paint under me, I've released my uh, hold on the table. Um, you can't really do that unless you've got experience. But sometimes I do it simply because it's the best way to get the job done. So, if I've gone ahead and given you the go-ahead to paint those slanted lines, I might as well give you the freedom to practice an A. You go down at your slant. Now here, you join this right here, right there. That's where you want to connect to make this A. I lost my chiseled edge. If you lose that chiseled edge, your best bet's just to stop, repallet, and start again. Set your width and come down. Now you make your A, a just a beautiful teepee shape. There we go. Cross up here. Make sure that single stroke right there, that's fine. All right, let's see here. We'll come down here. And again, like I say, some people have the misconception that a single stroke letter, you have to go up here, come down as quick as you possibly can and have it perfect right then. No, that's not the case. Single stroke means that it's the width of your brush, uh, of your brush. It's the width. It's just a single stroke. It doesn't mean that you can't come back and make that letter really, really pretty. And of course, the more experience you get, the less you have to fiddle with it to make it pretty. Smack dab in the middle or close to it. There's your A. All right, I can turn you loose on that. I can probably turn you loose on a K. There's something the matter with my brush right there. I hope you see that. I'm overcoming it, but for some reason it wants to do something funny there. But that's okay. All right, your K, you want it about the same width as what you've been doing, about half your width of your height here. Okay, so I figure that's right there close. And we're going to come down at a slant there. Now all of this just takes practice. Just lots and lots of practice. Now I'm going to come down right off of here. Uh, right like so somewhere in that area. I don't know if this is going to be a very pretty K or not, but we're going to make it a pretty K. There we go. Yes. It will be. It'll be fine. There we go. And we want those to kind of match up right there. Now see, I wasn't really expecting to turn you loose on these two. Well, darn. Okay, everything's good. That happens occasionally. Just to give you a little fit. Okay. And then we do this right here. Okay. And there's a, a pretty decent looking K. I've done better and I've done worse. And you will too. It's uh, this, I'm, I'm not asking for perfection here. I'm uh, looking for a bona fide attempt of perfection, but you got to know it's never going to happen. Um, now, I don't know exactly where to take you from here. Uh, we can possibly, there's possibly more letters, and any letter in the alphabet, and see, I should have run over this prior to my filming, but any letter in the alphabet that uh, has a horizontal bar, that would be your E, F, H, I, L, and T, 
any letter that has a horizontal bar or any letter that has a slanted line, well, I'm going to give you full blast ahead. Go ahead and try them. Have fun trying them. You're going to fail. You're going to fail miserably on some of this. And, but that's all part of it. Uh, you've, you have to do that. Um, now, I am going to start another segment on the cursive, and I'm going to do that very, very soon because you'll enjoy that as much. Uh, this here, for some reason, your single stroke hand lettering has such a bad name for it. And I think it's just one of the most beautiful alphabets there is. And, uh, but you can't do this other stuff without learning this first. You ju there's just no way. I mean, you can do uh, beautiful letters uh, like something like this or beautiful letters like, uh, shoot, something like that. Uh, but all of these letters, this one and that one as well, uh, they came because they're built off of the single stroke letter. I mean, we can give your letter a serif. There are so many ways to, the, to, to dress this letter up. It's kind of like a woman's little black dress. You can dress it up. Um, I'm not sure exactly where to take you further on today's lesson. Uh, I have quite a bit to do. I would like to ask you if I'm helping you at all, and I hope I am, uh, well, subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, and also tell all the young boys and girls, not everybody is academically blessed. Now, they're just not. And they, I, I firmly feel that they need a trade. And this is not a bad trade. Uh, it used to be a lot better before the onset of vinyl, but it is coming back strong. And you can still make a living. You have to hustle, but you've, I've always hustled. So that's no different. Uh, I just want to impress on you that once you learn this, you'll be so pleased with yourself. And it will lead to other things, uh, better things. Um, now, I sometimes make these. Uh, what are these here that I've got here? Um, my daddy one time told me, that anything that you can personalize, anything, a handkerchief, a piece of jewelry, a, a sign, anything at all that you can personalize, you will never go hungry. And I have always found that to be true. Uh, now, I sometimes paint these and I sell these for $20 plus shipping. If you'd like to have one, I'll sign one and send one off to you right now. They make great gifts. They really do. In any color of your choice, it doesn't matter. Um, it offsets some of my uh, time consuming on doing this film. Uh, you certainly don't have to. But this here, this right here, uh, a young lady or a young fella could go down to a used bookstore, set up a card table, paint alphabet letters, and have a good day. Um, so... I think I'll close my lesson for today. I'm not sure how much time I've spent. Uh, please understand that um, I'm going against the normal lettering practice lessons by turning you loose on actual letters. But I know how um, I know how hard it is to stick to a program with just the single strokes. I know that. So I want you to get comfortable with your brush. Again, uh, I have to tell you, this brush becomes your best friend. Uh, get comfortable with it. Learn what it will do. This is a quill, and it's especially made for lettering. Now, it's not meant for big curly cues or things like that. There's other brushes for that. This is a quill, and when you get it worked to a nice chisel edge, you can, oh, uh, you can do really pretty things. One other thing I can show you here before I close would be... Let's get us a nice chiseled edge here. All right. That might be too thin. Now, this is all a preference on your paletting and your thickness of paint. You'll learn about that. I, I can't help you much more than tell you that you have to work it to a fine chiseled point. Um, if you want a little 
cheaper letter. It's I don't know why I call it a cheaper letter. Um, because it's certainly not. You just come down like this. All right. And instead of making your sharp edge on top, you just simply round it. Now this is used when your sign work isn't needed to be very sophisticated. It's actually a lot faster to do than this right here. Now I'm probably making a mistake in showing, no I'm not, I'm not making a mistake in showing you that at all. Because in order to make that, you're going to have to make brush strokes like this. And this. And any brush stroke that you make uh, to teach you how to twist and to maneuver that brush, any brush stroke that teaches you that is a good one. So, for this segment, continue practicing on your single stroke legs, anything straight. Learn how to work that brush to where you can bring it into a fine point and stop it where you command it to stop. Stars are a good way to learn that. I'm wanting you to practice a horizontal bar, and I'm allowing you to do a slanted stroke. We'll work on these another time. I'm going to start this right away. These are the letters. Well, these are definitely the letters. E-F-H-I-L-T. Those all use your horizontal bar. I've just made a K and an A because right at the moment I can't think of the letters that actually have the slants, but you can play with those as well. Just uh, the next segment, we're going to work on your curves and, of course, the dreaded S. So please subscribe to my channel, tell your friends how to find me, tell all the young people that who would be interested in this, tell them I'm here for them, and uh, give me a little feedback if you will. If I'm helping you, please let me know. And I appreciate, I appreciate every single one of you. Practice.